there's something almost paradoxical about the way in which we seem to perceive time to pass and the f way physics describes time. And partly it's a question of, of is there a clear temporal order of things in, in our perceptions or do we somehow put lots of things together and form a picture of things which, which, in which temporal order is all part of one thing. And I think we see this most clearly perhaps in music, where music is something which has a fundamentally temporal character. I mean, it's just nothing without the t passage of time. That's a crucial part of what music is. And yet there is something as a whole there that you, you grasp as a whole. And it's, I think there is something of the paradox of how time on the one hand seems to pass and each moment is an independent thing, yet there is a kind of wholeness about it which we don't kind of see in our present physical picture. We only know about time by the things that happen in it. We're conscious of the occurrence of events. We're not in a conscious of time in any other way. In our world, time flows, but never from old age to youth. Every age has tried to understand how our time on this world fits with the larger workings of eternity and has tried to explain the flow of time with the intellectual tools it had to hand. In the medieval period, those tools were religion and music. The difference between the medieval view of time and our view of time is quite considerable. Um, if you consider the way the medieval world was, one of the most controlling and powerful forces of the medieval world was the church. And they actually saw music as directly connected to their perception of time. <laughs> They liked plain song, music that just had one theme that was sung by everyone. To them, the idea of a single line of music, they equated this directly with the idea of the eternal, of God. To the medieval world, there were two kinds of time gods and ours. For God, all eternity, past and future, was laid out. Only for us does time flow. God is in fact outside time, so there's no before for God. He's present simultaneously with each bit of our temporal story, and so he has a different way of knowing what's going to happen. Aquinas has the image of God standing on a hill um, overlooking a valley and we think of the history of this world as a caravan of travelers going through the valley. And God is related to that caravan, whatever point it happens to be in its progress through the valley. The caravan moves, but God doesn't and God has full awareness of everything happening in the valley but has so without having to alter his position. In the uh, Christian view of the world up till about the 17th century, 
uh, one very much gets a view that uh, heaven is a world where time is not experienced in the way that it is experienced on Earth. Those poor mortals who live on Earth have to uh, undergo the, the vagaries of uh, worldly mundane existence. Before the scientific revolution, time was deemed an inexplicable part of God's purpose. An unknowable flow which cuts us off from the changeless perfection of eternity. This world is a place of trial for human beings. There's a degree of pessimism about the way the world is. And one can find that uh, reflected in the language of the prayers used in the medieval monastery that was here before the Reformation. Every night before they went to bed, um, the last prayer that was said in that service asked God to protect them through the silent hours of the night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon thy eternal changelessness. Well, erosion waits for nobody, it just keeps eating away. And we just have to keep working at it to try and hold it back. Medieval man's divided attitude to time is summed up in their cathedrals. They were built as monuments to the changelessness of eternity. Yet it was recognized that time would inexorably grind even them away. Durham Cathedral is a bit like a forest of oaks, saying here is the permanence of God. The huge thickness of the pillars emphasizes solidity and permanence in dramatic contrast to our fleeting world. It took 40 years to build a cathedral and 900 years to keep it in good repair. We could be fighting a losing battle, but we hope that whatever we replace will last at least another 100 to 200 years' time. Medieval architecture and music were a celebration of God's permanence, but ironically, the study of these things, particularly music, began the transformation of the medieval mindset. If you consider the people who were commissioning the building of cathedrals were also the same people who were commissioning music, they very much wanted to elicit the same emotional response from people with both these things. They wanted a sense of awe both were meant to be monuments to eternity. One is permanence in motion, and one of them is permanence at rest. Just as architecture required the ability to unfold a structure in space, so music required the ability to unfold a structure in time. Music was one of the places where the mathematical and scientific understanding of time began. If you consider what every um, well-educated man was you know, expected to know, it consisted of um, the classical quadrivium, which was constituted of geometry, arithmetic, music and astronomy. So you can see that you know, these things are very important things and they all go together, they're considered together. The medieval study of time in music and then geometry influenced the fledgling sciences of mechanics and astronomy. There had been astronomy which had investigated the heavens. The heavens are cyclical and perfect. They don't change. On Earth, though, everything changes. And it was thought by many people that things on Earth were not sustainable.